So what are the properties that we should see into waterproofing before the choice of selection of waterproofing material? Right, so we all know that yeah, the first and most common thing that we actually require from a waterproofing material is it should stop water, right? So it should not be permeable to water, right? So any material that we choose uh, should have that property of impermeability, right? So if the plastics are also very good with impermeation, but then are they, those uh, a good choice for waterproofing? Your surfaces, no, right? So there will be a lot of other parameters that on which you need to check your waterproofing. The second thing will be it should have flexibility, right, which will not crack onto any cracks which will happen into your surface. So crack bridging ability, the crack bridging ability of your uh, waterproofing material should be more than the cracking ability of your surface. So if your concrete can crack 0.3 mm, 0.4 mm. Uh, your crack bridging ability of your waterproofing material should be at least uh, two times or at least you know 80 to 90 percent more than your cracking ability, ability of your concrete. So second most thing is flexibility that you will need into your uh, selection of your waterproofing material. The third thing is uh, bonding strength. Your material should have good bonding strength. If you don't have a very good bonding strength in your material any cracks or any deflections that will happen into your surface will let your waterproofing material detach from your surface so we also see sometimes bubbling that are happening onto your surfaces that is because your waterproofing material does not have very good bonding strength due to which it is getting detached onto every small movement or every small uh, jerk that is uh, faced by your structure so third thing is you should your material should have good bonding strength fourth it is breathability your waterproofing material needs to be breathable in nature which means there should not be any water which should penetrate from top to inside your structure but then because everything is breathing you cannot have your uh, room cooled and it stays cool forever it does not happen like that right because your walls are breathing your walls are breathing out so when you your your walls are breathing out there is air circulation which is happening inside your structure also so we need a waterproofing material which facilitates that breathing of your structure because if you don't facilitate breathing and if you resist that breathing you can also have a bulging and a debonding of your waterproofing material on a longer span. The fifth most important test that your waterproofing material needs to surpass is UV resistance. If you're coating a waterproofing material onto surfaces which are going to be exposed and which will not be covered then it is very important that your waterproofing should have the feature of UV resistance. If your material will have UV resistance, then and then only it will not, you know, uh, deteriorate and the performance will not go down of your material final performance. The sixth most important thing is your bacteria or your fungal, uh, uh, you know, creation that happens into your concrete will not degrade, will not the, uh, degrade your uh, or corrode your waterproofing material. It should be resistant to that. It should be non biodegradable material right which does not uh, you know into your water tank you see all things getting softer right over a period so uh, this material should not degrade with that you know uh, overall you know uh, stresses of water the seventh most important material uh, feature will be alkaline resistance over a period it is seen that if the ph value of water increases it also increases uh, when a water droplet is present onto a concrete surface on a longer period. So the unreacted lime into your uh, concrete will start reacting with water and when the reaction happens your pH value which is 7 the drinking water it raises to 12, 13, 14 and if it raises up to that level it can start deteriorating it can start impacting your concrete. So alkaline hydrolysis is the uh, process name and your waterproofing material should be capable enough to resist any alkaline 
you know shock that your uh, surface will have or any uh, highest form of alkalinity so if your waterproofing material has a uh, feature to resist all that alkalinity then it is again tick mark then next most important thing will be mechanical resistance so if your waterproofing material whether it be uh, you know an underlay or an overlay it should have some mechanical resistance because you can't expect waterproofing coating done tak 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 and then you can't expect the next day without any you know movement your overlay will be done right so and the second part is if it is all already going to be exposed then you will need mechanical resistance so any abrasions that are going to happen right your waterproofing material should be capable enough to bear at least a minimal if it is an underlay and very good abrasion resistance if it is an overlay and it is going to be exposed it is better to have a waterproofing material choiced which has heat resistance if your waterproofing material is going to be exposed because if your waterproofing material has the property of reflecting a lot of sunlight then you will have a cooler internal atmosphere right so there are a lot of material choices which are available by different different companies which has both the features of uh, waterproofing and thermal uh, insulation so last and most important thing for an indian is uh, the cost effectiveness yes you need to make a choice of a waterproofing material which is not very high priced and uh, you know, which uh, which has features which you actually does, do not require for that particular area for treatment and you are paying too high for uh, those areas because say uh, lesser flexible material will be okay for uh, treating basements or under water tanks and all those areas and more flexible material will be used on the topper side so you need to make a choice of uh, material choice on the features that you require for your surface so that you are not over spending for uh, the that particular area waterproofing so before getting into details about what all kind of material that are available in the market and where you should use what kind of material let's talk about steps of waterproofing that you need to follow while you are uh, waterproofing your surfaces <clears throat> so first and foremost important thing will be your inlet outlet pipes so you always see all those uh, you know uh, holes that we do into your structure into our structures through which we pass pipes or if there are some small holes which are done just to uh, give support sometimes so those areas need to be waterproofed and uh, water tightened before uh, we start our waterproofing process so what we need to do is um, <clears throat> we we must fix our pipe perfectly with ready mix concrete mortars right ready mix concrete mortars will give you strength which is uh, around 50 to 80 uh, mega pascals uh, normal concrete strength is around 35 in a residential area and in a commercial space it will be around 40 40 45 uh, mega pascals uh, like your bridges and all that so this will have good uh, compressive strength with that it will also have good bonding strength and flexibility so it is better that you choose do only those kind of material to repair i'll give you one name that you can use uh, there is a material known as geolite magma and geolite so geolite is for wall uh, it is it comes from a company name as keracol so geolite uh, for wall and geolite magma if you have uh, something on the floor right and you want a free flowing material so uh, these two materials can be used for uh, filling up the gap beside your pipe area the second thing will be uh, your uh, joint of your concrete cementitious surface and pvc surface so i explained you earlier that there will be cracks onto these two joints and uh, you don't want because the behavioral uh, change of this two material is different and because of which there will be cracks there so you don't want any cracks to happen in future for which you need uh either a polyurethane based material uh, polyurethane based silicones that we used on the joints but then far far better technology is to use uh, far far more good advisable step is to use epoxy mortars 
epoxy mortars if they are placed uh, onto this joint they will do two features that you actually require onto those areas one it will not due to pressure of water it will not let your pipe delocate from its place right because there will be water which will be flowing inside always and due to which your pipe gets delocated and because of thermal expansion contraction difference between this two differential material there will not be any cracks which will happen there so you will get two advantages if you are using epoxy based uh, jointing mortar there so there will not be any delocation and there will not be any cracks so i will name you one material uh, from the same company so i am i'm because you can find easily i am naming only uh, products of one company so that you can also uh, you know trace them easily so there is geolite gel material which is an epoxy mortar with which you can treat your pipe joints on the top after filling of your uh, uh, the rest of your part of concrete because your concrete will have a thickness of uh, uh, somewhere around 3 inches to 6 to 8 inches right thick so all that area is to be filled with ready mix concrete mortar and the top surface is to be uh, uh, you know uh, a, a joint a joint is to be treated with the pipe joint is to be treated with uh, geolite gel right so this two material will uh, as, you know make this uh, treatment sufficient enough for water tightening so once we have completed this uh, please be uh, cautious about not using uh, concrete and epoxy on the same day so it should have a minimum span of 1 to 2 days after which we will be treating those areas so second happens when you start cleaning so second and foremost important thing will be you start cleaning your surface so before that you need to check that if there is any loose particle that you have any grease or oil which will not let your waterproofing material bond onto it we need to clean that if there is any paint or any loose particle that we have onto uh, our surface any uh, weakened part of your concrete which you have existing onto your concrete needs to be completely removed blown off and chipped outside so that you have clean strong base for your treatment of your waterproofing once you have cleaned everything onto your surface which is loose part and which has some weakening uh, spots so if you have cleared all weakening points then you need to check if there is any ditches that you have made or if there is any honeycomb that you have any cold joint that you have i discussed about cold joint right i discussed about honeycomb i discussed about structural joint that you have you have expansion joints and all that or you have any cracks that had happened so all those areas need to be addressed well right so i give you a small brief uh, you know, how you can treat all those areas if there are very thin cracks you can fill the same material geolite gel how you can do that you need to cut chamfer uh, 4 to 5 mm of that crack and then use that material to fill into that crack gap if the crack exceeds 0.5 mm of crack then you need to use aping system there is aqua stop 120 material with with the same company which you can use for those cracks which are exceeding 0.5 mm right apart from that when you also have cold joint you will have to go with the same system you will have to use aqua stop 120 on those joints and which needs to be fixed with on the both edges it should be fixed with geolite gel